Attention all gamers. This is me. All my video got destroyed in the process of making this video. So, I'm going to be putting in some gameplay of a video game of my choice. So, now I get to see how horrible I am at reviewing movies and how horrible I am at playing games. So, there's a little treat for you. Have fun. It's me, Jason Steele's production, coming at you with another video. As you can tell, I'm in a different room. Why? Well, that's because I'm in college, and I'm in my dorm. Um, yeah. It's pretty cool. Don't you like it? I like it. I got some lights. I got a nice espresso machine over there. And I got poster, and I got a Google. It's pretty good. I got a nice little setup going on. Um, but that's not why you're here. You're here to listen to me talk about the rise or the fall, and then the rise of Sony Pictures Animation. Now, if you're loyal and you watched my last video, you would know that I would make, that I was gonna make a video on Sea of Trees, and I was going to, because I really wanna make that video, but I kinda wanna make that video when I have more of a following, just because I think it's important that people hear my opinion on Sea of Trees, because I think that's a phenomenal film that everyone should watch. So, I'm just gonna wait on that and I want to talk about something that's a little bit more relevant, and that is the fall and rise of Sony Pictures Animation. Alright. Sony Pictures Animation has really never been all that good. Except for maybe Cloudy at the Chance of Meatballs, just because I love that movie so much. I love it to pieces. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's so good. I like how in the beginning, it's gray, it has gray palette, everything is sad and eh. And then towards the end of the movie, when he makes his invention, um, it's all bright and colorful. And that's a really good artistic direction that Sony made. It's a very, very smart, I like it. Um, but every single one of their movies, except Cloudy, um, is boring, uninspired, and bland. Why I say that? Well, you can kind of tell. If um, you look at the animation style of Cloudy at the Chance of Meatballs, Hotel Transylvania, and the Emoji movie, you can see that the animation style is very similar. Not as similar as another um, animation studio that I won't talk about, but they have um, a film called um, uh, um, Despicable Me, and I'm not even going to touch whatever. I'm not even going to touch it. Mm -mm, no, go away. No, I'm not going to touch you. You're even worse than Sony. <laughs> um, but... I want to make the point that Sony Pictures Animation is cheaply made. I mean, look at the um, look at the cost for the animation, or the average cost of the animation for a Sony Pictures Animation film. Now, look at the average cost of a very well-known animation studio called Pixar. Notice how they're completely different. That's not the point. The point is now look at the gross production. Um, the the gross the. <laughs> Now look at the gross income, the net, net worth. We got Pixar, and Pixar has a lot more than Sony. So Pixar spent a lot more to make their animation, and in result made more. Sony used less to make their animation, and made less in the long run. Does, do you make, does that make sense? Better. Um, so why is Sony not making as much as Pixar? Well, that's because of lack of animation style and creativity. Let's look at some of Sony's videos, or some of Sony's movies. Let's start with Quality of the Chance of Meatballs. As I said, I like it. It's really good. It's one of their first films, I believe. I really like the soundtrack. It's, it's, it's good. It's decent. I mean, there's obviously some plot holes, but <laughs> it's really not that important. I'm gonna give it like a six out of 10. And then we have Peter Rabbit. Um, it's not an animation movie, but the rabbit's animated, and you can tell that everything in the movie's animated and annoying and boring and lame. That is a two out of ten. It's my least favorite movie of the bunch. It's horrible. Then we have Hotel Transylvania. Now Hotel Transylvania is very interesting because it has a very similar animation style as uh, Cloudy, and you can tell that it's uninspired and that it was just ripping off of the animation style of Cloudy because Cloudy and Chance Meatballs made good money, good amount of money. It's just 
Hotel Transylvania is so uninspired, it's so bland, it's so run of the mill, and it's it's just one of those movies that you watch with your ten year old sister and eat popcorn and just turn your brain off. It's not good. I would give it like a three, maybe a four out of ten. Um, the emoji movie. Now, remember when I said Peter Rabbit <laughs> is the worst of the bunch? The emoji movie isn't a movie, so I can't say it's the worst of the bunch. It's just product placement. It's a commercial. So I'm going to give that a one. And movies that I give a one out of ten aren't movies in my opinion. The emoji movie is not a movie. All right? It's a commercial. And I want you to know that the emoji movie is a freaking commercial. Um... But that's not why we're here. We're here about the, we're here to hear about the rise of Sony Pictures Animation. Now, why is Sony Pictures Animation rising? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Well, that's just because of this cute little movie called Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. That movie is great. It's stunning. I just saw it, and it's so good. I love it. It's I mean, it makes me so happy just thinking about it, dude. Because the um, animation is so creative. We got like five different Spider-Mans, and each one has their own artistic animation to it. Uh, different genres, even. We got like a, an anime manga type um, uh, animation, and then we got like a newer, kind of like 1920s, and then we got classic Spider-Man animation. It's just good. I really like it. It's, it's cute. Um, and it just, the whole movie is filmed like a comic book. And I think, and I heard somewhere, that Sony Pictures Animation purposely made it 15 frames per second um, just for production to make the cost cheaper, which kind of makes me a little upset. But I think if they didn't say that, people would assume that's just because for artistic direction, and it does make it look a lot more artistic. So I just like to think that they chose to have it 15 frames a second to make it more artistic. <laughs> even though they probably did it to make the film cheaper to make but that's a company that's just what they do now the movie the plot wise isn't the best it's not the best plot if um sony were to go the direction they normally take and to have the animation style similar to say the emoji movie the movie wouldn't do so well the, everyone will hate it everyone will go why is this the movie why was this made Marvel does a much better adaptation of Spider-Man, but no, they went full creative mode on that movie, and now Sony has made the best Spider movie to date. That it's that's good. It's a good movie. The animation style that Spider-Man uses is very creative, and it tells a story. The animation people mainly think is just something pretty to look at, but. In this movie, it proves that animation can be used as a story device. Very helpful for um, getting an overall feel and perspective on the movie. And there are so many creative, like, cre there are so many talented creators out there that are creative. And Sony has just found the gold mine that is creativity. If Sony picks up these creative, talented creators and use them on their field, they can create a movie like this all the time and make so much money. Creativity is profitable. Now I'm going to give you a little video game example. There's this recent controversy that Bethesda did with Fallout 76. Now this, this game is extremely uninspired and boring. So Obsidian, the, the main developers of the Fallout series that Bethesda stole from, or not stole, but bought from, is making another game called The Outer Worlds, and this looks creative and inspired. Fallout 76, with its being uncre uncreative and uninspired, has really failed. Bethesda is losing millions by the day because of their choices that they have made. Um, Obsidian who, like, just a couple years ago, were not on the face of the planet, now is making a lot of money, it's getting a lot of sponsorships, and getting a lot of attention, because they create a trailer that is very interesting, that shows that video games can be creative and fun. So I'm very excited for Outer Worlds, 
and like I said, creativity is profitable. I'm in a really good mood now. Well, that's just because I want to see other companies take this direction. Sony can do it. Pixar can do it. Why not something like, I don't know, dare I say Illumination make something creative. That'll never happen. But let's just say they do. That would be cool. Because then we'll have a lot of animation styles to go from. And that's just exciting. The future of movies is rising. The power that we can do for animation is... I'm excited. Thanks, America. See, I think money should be a big reason why companies make movies because people make movies for money. That's just how the world works, and I'm okay with that. I mean, people want a paycheck for something that they create, right? Um... But I think money needs to take a back seat when it comes to producing a movie. I think creativity should take the wheel to see how well it can drive. Creativity is worth it. Well, old Mary Todd's calling, so it must be time for supper. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. This is Jason Steeles signing off. Next week, I will be making a movie, or <laughs> I'll be making a movie, I wish. No, um... Next week, I'll be making a video on sound design and how sound design makes a movie pop. It really makes a movie from a 6 out of 10 to like a 9 out of 10. Oh, I forgot to give my rating for Spider-Man. That's um an 8. Yeah, an 8. It's a really good movie. Plot's weird, but it's good. Alright, see ya. Make sure to support my Patreon. Like, comment, subscribe. All the shebang. Adios.